Understanding management accounting, relevant costs, and sunk costs. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. The information for this video was taken from a Wall Street Journal article here at the bottom of the page about the Delta Northwest Airlines merger. These airlines are merging, and there was a recent story that the last piece of the merger merging the uh, ability of pilots from two different airlines to fly together was the last piece, the last hurdle that was remaining to get the airlines fully merged. Here are some of the cost savings that are mentioned in the article. First of all, operations. Northwest was headquartered in Minneapolis, Delta, and Atlanta. So you had two organizations doing operations, making reservations, issuing tickets, flight codes. We all see flight numbers when we fly, two separate frequent flyer programs, two sets of people scheduling pilots. And now that's been eliminated, uh, about several hundred former Northwest airline staff are moving down to Atlanta. There'll be one location in Atlanta to do this process. Vendors. Coca-Cola recently took over as the beverage vendor on all the Northwest flights. So if you now have two airlines buying from Coca-Cola rather than one, you can negotiate lower prices, not only for beverages, but fuel, equipment, airline parts, etc. And finally, pay and benefits. One of the things that was mentioned in the story is integrating seniority lists which determine pay and benefits. So if you were a Delta airline pilot with 15 years of seniority, you were merged into North or a Northwest pilot with 15 years of seniority. In the merged airline, you would have that same level of seniority and you would maintain whatever benefits uh, were accrued or accumulated based on your years of seniority. So those are some of the cost savings that the combined company expects to save. This also brings up the idea of opportunity costs, which is defined as a benefit obtained by pursuing an alternative course of action. I always use the example of somebody in school. Gail's a paralegal in a law firm. She's considering leaving her job to attend a law school. Well, what she loses by attending law school is the three years of income she could make if she was still working full time. What she gains, what her goal is, is that after she graduates from law school, she will potentially earn more money as an attorney to more than make up for the income that was lost by going to law school. So over the long term, financially, she's better off going to law school, she thinks. Opportunity costs are not recorded in the accounting records, but they're relevant for making a decision. And when we talk about relevance, Relevance is defined as something that's important when you're making a decision. So I'm going to flip over and talk about a different uh, concept, sunk costs. And I've defined it here. Sunk costs are costs incurred which cannot be recovered regardless of a future event. And what Delta Northwest is hoping is that they can reduce the sunk costs by merging. So let's think about before the merger. Bob, the businessman, is considering getting on flight 315 from St. Louis to Chicago, and the plane's leaving in 15 minutes. And the question is, what's the economic impact to Delta for selling Bob a ticket for $200? And the point is, is that most of the costs that Delta is going to incur for this person jumping on this flight have already happened. And here's some examples. Delta for flight 315 has already incurred operations costs to pay for the people, location, all those costs, overhead costs for reservation ticketing and scheduling. They've already paid labor costs for the pilot crew and other staff. In fact, a pilot friend of mine tells me that um, for a lot of people in the airline business, their clock, their time clock starts running when the gate backs up from the plane backs up from the gate. That's when their time clock starts running. They've already filled up the plane with plane fuel, regardless of how many people are on the plane. They've probably already put on enough meals and beverages to cover Bob 
in case somebody jumps on the plane at the last minute. So that's a sunk cost they can't recover. They've already paid fees to the airport to have the gate for flight 315. So it has a profit of $16 or 8%. And that's the look of the cost for this flight 315 for having one more person get on the flight. And so the point I've made on other videos is when somebody comes up to the gate at the last minute, of course you're going to sell them a ticket because it's either eat those sunk costs and don't get any revenue or cover some of those sunk costs with revenue. Now there's variable costs that I'm not going to include in this discussion. So let's say Delta and Northwest decide to merge. How does it look now? We'll assume that the ticket cost is the same. Let's say, for example, that the cost of the operations department goes down. It goes from $85 to $80 as the portion of the cost for this ticket because they've eliminated one operations center. We'll assume that the pilot and the crew labor expenses are the same, although the merged airlines are going to negotiate new pilot contracts that may affect that salary expense, salary and benefit expense. Because the combined airlines are buying more fuel, they pay a lower cost to a vendor because they're buying more. So the fuel cost goes down from $25 to $22. For the same reason, in-flight meals go down. Coca-Cola is selling to Northwest and Delta, not just Delta anymore, so that a combined company can demand a lower beverage cost. We'll assume that the airport fees for the gate remain the same and the profit goes up. The reason the profit goes up is is that the sunk costs, those costs that you can't recover, are now lower with the combined merged airline than they were when Delta was a standalone airline. That's the end of part 11. Here's our YouTube channel for small monthly group chats the first Saturday of each month. You can contact us. You can register for individual online tutoring and live chat through our website. Here's our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.